uh, show. Anyone is welcome to come up if you uh, are enjoying what you're watching, if you feel like you can do better than the guy or gal who came up before you, uh, then you're welcome to sign in at any time, which I encourage. And last, the last time we did this, a few people uh, signed, signed up at the last moment, and one person came up and took uh, a particular challenge. <clears throat> now, um, the, you can tell uh, a story that you prepared, whether it be poetry, whether it be a short story, uh, or you can simply come up and uh, just tell, tell a memory. In fact, I'll give you a challenge for you to think about if you want uh, tonight, if you uh, want uh, motivation to come up here. For instance, one of the things uh, I, I recently learned about is that the French have a saying. Uh, 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 does anyone know French? Anyone? No. Yeah? Okay. Well, maybe you can try and find In English, it's the spirit of the stairwell the, or the spirit of the stairs. Um, if the I, I, I won't say the expression because my French is terrible, but essentially what it means is it's um, if when you're returning home and as you're climbing the stairs going home, you suddenly remember the thing you should have said in a conversation earlier in the day. And if a, if a lovely expression, I love the, the idea of it, and we've all had situations in our life or moments in our life when you wish you had said something, you know, or you had the perfect comeback, but of course you think of it 10 minutes too late or an hour too late. And so my challenge for you, if you are up for it and you want to come up, is tell us something you wish you had said at a certain point in your life, you know? Like, I wish I would have told the police officer that the dead body was there before I got there. You know, something like that. All right? But it could be an interesting story, but of course it's, it's up, up to you. All right? Now, there are a few things I'd like to do with the Penning University show. This is a continuation of a series of shows that I did back in the States a long, long time ago. And uh, there's a few things I, I like to do. One, to encourage all of you to be supportive of one another and, and to come up and tell your story of your choice. Um, for fun, I have... Uh, the, the Little Black Book, which I like to show off. Uh, this book is over 20 years old at this point, and it was originally started at the original Penny University over 20 years ago. And uh, I pass around the book, and people can just write whatever they want, thoughts or anything like that. You don't have to write it to me. It's not meant to be like a yearbook. It's just essentially you can write a little poem, draw something, or whatever. Just express yourself. And this book is going around the room, and... You're welcome to write and do whatever you want, and you'll see some people have wrote, written stuff uh, from the last one. And hopefully, one day, I'll be able to finish that book with a collection of stories from you. All right? So, is everyone doing good? Yeah? Yeah? yeah. yeah. Everyone ready for the holidays? Almost. Yeah, almost. <laughs> almost. Doing your shopping and everything like that? Not yet. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> doing your shopping. Well, uh, to start us off, uh, before I call up our, our first guest for tonight, uh, I'll, I'll tell you something, I, I, a story I've never told. It's, uh, a, this will be my spirit of the stairway story. Um, a, a long time ago, I worked in a, a grocery store, like a food store, <clears throat> and I was like a young kid, uh, probably 16, 17 years old. And to get to the break room in the back uh, for your lunch, uh, you had to go through the seafood department of the, the store. And there was a, an older woman, maybe in her 50s, and her name was Katie. And Katie was just one of those women who had the worst luck. Every time you talked to her, something terrible had happened to her in her life. And I would always get stuck talking to her and never actually make it into the break room to eat because she would just tell me her sob story. And one day she told me that she met some guy named Ray. She was single, I think divorced, and had uh, previously had children. And she had met this man named Ray, who was very nice to her and all of this. And, but every time I talked to her, Ray kept having bad luck, like he kept getting arrested for drinking and driving. You know, just bad luck, you know, things you just can't avoid. And 
And so, and eventually I met Ray. He was this tall, skinny guy with this gigantic, like Sam Elliott kind of mustache, you know? And, uh, and you know, talked to him. I was very nice to him and everything like that. He, he would hang out at the seafood while she worked. And, you know, and so two months later, I only met Ray one time. And two months later, I'm walking with my food, hoping to eat it. And I stop and Katie starts talking to me. And she says she's getting married. She's engaged. That Ray had proposed to her. And I'm like, oh, well, congratulations, Katie. And she goes, now, this is the exciting news. Ray wants you to be the best man. <laughs> Will you be Ray's best man? And because I was young and because I was just too polite, I said, of course, yeah, yeah, I guess I'll be, I'll be his best man. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. And so uh, she got married about a month later. Uh, I came to the wedding on the beach. This was in Florida, Hudson Beach. A very terrible beach, but Hudson Beach. <laughs> I wore a suit because I was young and I thought that's what you're supposed to do uh, for a wedding. I was the only one who wore a suit. <laughs> Everybody else was wearing shorts, including uh, the, uh, the husband, the bee, the groom, and uh, the bride-to-be was wearing a, a nice bathing suit. And the, uh, the, the minister was wearing uh, just a pair of shorts. That was all he was wearing, as you do. And so I'm standing in the Florida heat. It's incredibly hot because it's Florida. And I'm wearing a suit. And the entire time during the ceremony, I'm just, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, and I don't know anybody but Katie. And, and I'm the best man standing next to Ray for the most important moment of his life. Where I'm assuming this is his third, fourth most important moment of his life. <laughs> and there's this young guy, like, over here. And he's just staring at me the whole time, like he wanted to kill me. Like just like, and I'm like, and it was really distracting. Like I've always saw him, even in my peripheral, just like, you know, I'm like what the deal with this guy, right? Like maybe he just doesn't like people wearing suits, right? <laughs> and come to find out, that was Ray's son, <laughs> and Ray's son had a hard time understanding why he was not the best man. And, and he eventually talked to me. He's like, so how long have you known Ray? I'm like, uh, uh, about, you know, a couple months. Yeah, well, you've been hanging out with him? I'm like, yeah, not really. Just met him one time at the seafood aisle, you know. And it, just, it was just really awkward. And afterward, we went to this country bar. And uh, it was really uncomfortable when I'm not a country person. And the jukebox, they had this jukebox that had all country, really bad country music. And, and there was, at the time, Wright Said Fred had that song, I'm Too Sexy. I don't know. I'm Too Sexy. Remember that? And, but it was in Spanish. Because apparently a B-side of the album had I'm Too Sexy in Spanish. And so I just put in like... Ten dollars, and I just repeated it like thirty times, and it was just the same song. I'm too sexy in Spanish, which you know I should know it by heart by now because I heard it so many times. And so the entire bar is like really tense and angry that the song playing. So the entire bar looks like Ray's son. And anyways, the point I'm trying to make is, on reflection, I should have said no. When Katie said. Will you be Ray's best man? I should have said, no, thank you. And I don't think that would have been bad. I don't think that would have been a terrible thing to do in my life. I don't think I would have regretted it. But I don't regret the wedding because now I think I have a, an almost okay story to tell. So anyway, that is my spirit of the stairway story that I'm sharing with you. And if you have a story like that you want to share, of course, talk to me and we can sign up. But... Let me get to some of our guests because you're not here just to see me. And by the way, of course, um, 
The owner of this wonderful establishment is here, and he has uh, coffee and tea and everything. So if you like uh, beverages, you can talk to him, of course, uh, and he'll take care of you. And, uh, yeah, are there any questions before we get started? Raise your hand if you have any questions. No? No? Good? Well, <laughs> excellent. All right, then. Let me uh, bring up our first, first gift. I heard about, I actually heard about this guy uh, before 